one thing that I, I've always been curious about, which is um, how much do you remember of uh, Neil Canton's previous film, Buckaroo Banzai, uh, influencing Back to the Future? Like there's definitely some similarities, like not only with the car, and of course you ported over Christopher Lloyd, and I know you were looking at John Lithgow as well. And the thing about the thing with the ladder emerging from the sky in part two was another gag that was in Buckaroo Banzai. Like, like, do you remember Buckaroo like entering the conversation? No, really. The, the only the the aspect of, of Buckaroo that that entered the conversation was was in terms of casting. Mm -hmm. uh, Neil was the one who suggested Christopher Lloyd uh, to play Doc Brown, um, and um, I mean, I, I remember having seen Buckaroo Banzai, but you know, frankly, not a whole lot of it. Uh, was indelibly etched in my brain. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that no, uh, we weren't thinking about that uh, when we when we wrote Back to the Future. And um, when, when did Black Rubanzai come out? I, it was 84. Like 82 or something? 84. 84. Well, remember, we'd already written, we'd already written several drafts of Back to the Future by then. So mm -hmm. uh, the first two drafts of Back to the Future uh, were written in, in 1980 and 81. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we got the movie off the ground, uh, we started rewriting it uh, in the spring of 84. So uh, we'd already figured out what Back to the Future was going to be before we even saw Buckaroo Banzai. Mm -hmm. And um, say, we met Christopher Lloyd and we instantly felt, yeah, yeah, he's perfect. He's perfect. And uh, and the rest is they say is history. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it's it's you know speaking of casting, I got to get an early peek at the sort of audition videos. They're on this new disc, and it's really just so cool to see all those faces doing those lines. And I I remember I was particularly impressed with John Cryer's audition. He was doing a little more of a nerdy take on Marty. Um, but what were your impressions of Cryer and some of the other actors that auditioned? Um, to be honest, I don't remember a lot about that stuff. I mean, I remember seeing it, um, seeing everybody's auditions, of course, because we auditioned every every young actor in town, and there's a lot of auditions that uh, that the performer uh, would not give us permission to include mm -hmm. um, for for various for various reasons. Um, whatever that elusive thing, that Marty McFly thing we were looking for, uh, we just had not seen it, did not see it uh, in, in any of these, in any of these performers. Um, you know, there were, there were some good runner-ups for Biff. Um, J.J. Cohen, who ended up playing Skinhead, uh, he was an early candidate for Biff. Uh, and then when we, we met Tom Wilson, uh, and the physicality of Tom was such that it was clear that Biff had to be this overbearing guy. So uh, uh, we did like JJ a lot. So we cast him as, as Skinhead, who is the one of Biff's guys that had the most, had the most lines. And then of course, Billy Zane. Uh, I don't remember, is his audition in there? Yes. Uh, for Biff? Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Back to the Future was Billy Zane's first movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, he, had a little uh, bit, he had a little bit more of a quiet, intense approach. One of, one, one of the great little stories. Yeah, 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 the, the Marlon Brando approach. Uh, to, to the extent that uh, when, when we were shooting, um, uh, JJ and, uh, and Casey Zamasco used to tell the, uh, the, the girl extras that were hanging around, hey, you know that guy is? That's Billy Brando, that's Marlon Brando's nephew. Uh, thinking that that might help them get laid, because <laughs> uh, Billy did have a, he, he did look like kind of a young Marlon Brando. Um, Absolutely. I never did hear whether that was a good line to pick up girls or not, but I know they tried it. <laughs>